I've had more requests to review this shoe than any other. Ginger Runner. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another gingerrunner.com review. I'm excited about this one because it is the number one most requested review pretty much since I started the channel. From Saucony, the Peregrine. Number seven, long time coming for this one. All right, first, let me give a little explanation as to why it's taken me so long to review this shoe. I tried version one. This was years ago when I first started Ginger Runner and I didn't end up reviewing that shoe because it was a mess. It was super narrow, it was heavy, it wasn't flexible, wasn't durable, didn't have very good grip. It had all these problems and made me really mad. I ended up running in it just over a month and sending it back to where I bought it. The shoe made me angry and I held on to that anger for a number of years, not wanting to review any of the Peregrines because I knew and read from multiple sources that it wasn't getting any better, that it was still the same shoe, it was still very stiff, didn't have very good grip or durability. Basically, it hadn't changed. Well, I finally caved. People kept saying this is the Kinvara of the trail and by version seven, things have just completely changed from version one. So it was about time that I gave it a shot. So I gave in and I'm happy that I did because this, the Peregrine seven, it's not a bad trail shoe. In fact, it's kind of fun. And I'm super glad that I finally gave it a shot. Is it the Kinvara of trail? No, it's a good comparison, though it just lacks a lot of the cushioning that the Confara has on the road. I'll get to a lot of that in this review. I'd actually liken it more to the New Balance 1010 V2, if you remember my review of that shoe. It's one of my favorite trail shoes ever. I don't even know if it exists anymore, but consider this a more beefed up, heavier, rugged version of that shoe. You know, so it's neutral, grippy, super protective, has an ever run layer, power track outsole, lots of bite, lots of fun. So yeah, there's things I like about the shoe. There's a couple of things I dislike. I'll get to them all in today's review of the Saucony Peregrine 7, as always, starting with things that I like. First thing, first run, every run since that I've noticed and like is the grip. The outsole on this bad boy, power track outsole, I, I don't like when they purposefully spell things wrong, but tons of lugs. The lugs themselves are sticky, but they're also sharp and angled in a proper manner for descents, for ascents. For, for climbing and descending. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, these things are pretty solid for roots, rocks, nastier conditions. They actually hold up pretty well, which is a good thing. So yeah, loving the grip. <laughs> they dig their teeth in and they hold on for dear life. <laughs> protection. We've got protection all over this shoe. On the bottom, they've got a carbon plate here up in the forefoot to protect you from rocks, sharp items underfoot. But then the overlays on the top, the TPU layer provides protection and durability on the upper. So these upper elements and even the outsole rubber is pretty protective. They all combine to make this shoe bomb proof, storm proof, rugged. And so far it's been holding up really well in the long run. So the durability factor is also increased. And finally, responsive. This shoe has a pretty decent balance between responsiveness and cushion. The Everrun layer inside the insole, plus the more responsive midsole material, the carbon plate, the outsole rubber, when combined to give you more of a responsive shoe than a cushy shoe, it's not gonna give you all the warm fuzzies of cloud running, but the precision and quickness of a responsive ride. And in this case, I really like it. Some shoes are really harsh, for example, version one, but I can happily say that version seven is a drastic change from that old Peregrine that I ran in yesteryear. So moving on to things that I'm just not keen on with the Peregrine seven, the upper. There are so many elements going on here with the overlays, the mesh itself, it's harsh and there's not a lot of stretch. There's not a lot of give, it's non-compliant. So if you have a wider forefoot or your foot swells over long runs, the upper is not gonna adapt. You will have to change the fit of the shoe to kind of adapt what's going on with your foot over a long haul, which is not a terrible thing. A lot of people will say, well, I want my shoe to be locked in and hold my foot really, really tightly. But that lack of stretch, that lack of give in the upper also contributes to a lack of breathability, some discomfort, some hot spots. So while it holds up well and it's super rugged and durable, it doesn't really lend itself to feel soft and squishy on your upper. The tongue, minor gripe, but something I have to point out because it bothered me, the tongue is short. I like to lock my laces here up along the top to get a good ankle lock in specific shoes. This one needs it for me, but the tongue unfortunately doesn't come up high enough to protect those laces on my foot. So they end up falling over the top of it, getting on my ankle, causing a bit of mischief and some discomfort. So I'm oftentimes having to reach down, readjust that tongue, retighten the laces, and that's a bit troublesome. And finally, a bit more cushion. People always tout this as the Kinvara of Trail from Saucony, but to be totally honest, it needs just some more forgiveness in that midsole material. They've got a little bit of ever run and it definitely contributes to 
bit more bounce. Maybe give it a millimeter or two more stack height. I don't know. The reason I even bring this up is for longer hauls, the shoe can get a bit fatiguing. Just a little bit more cushioning will allow this to be 50K, 50 mile or killer. Just be awesome. So yeah, I'm being a little bit nitpicky. Overall, had a pretty damn good time in the shoe. Surprised at how much the shoe has changed since version one and happy about that. And I know that this shoe has been out for a long time. Version eight, I believe is coming out next year. So I imagine many of you have comments or thoughts on this shoe. Many of you have probably run in it. So if you have thoughts on the Peregrine 7, let us know in the comments below. Let's get that dialogue going because obviously everyone's feet are different and we like to hear everyone's varying opinions. Let's move on to the points because they matter. Quality, I'm gonna give a four out of five. I like the materials here. Uh, it's not a perfect score, but I don't think it's a perfect shoe with materials, but it is holding up well. So quality, four out of five. Comfort, four out of five. It's borderline three out of five for me because I wish it just had a little bit more give, just a little bit. But that responsive cushion combo is nice. And I can see this being a great race shoe for people who like to go fast on the trails. Price, four out of five. $120, it's fine. It could be five out of five if it was around the $100 mark. You're gonna get some good miles out of this. It's gonna hold up well, but I'm gonna give a four out of five on price at 120 bucks. And finally looks, you know, it looks okay. I think the red version is a lot better looking, but four out of five on looks, uh, I'll give it to you. Bringing our grand total to 16 out of 20. Solid score right there in that gray zone between an amazing shoe and a good shoe. It's a solid shoe. And that brings me to the buy, try, or why. In this case, solid try, if not buy, but try is what I'm gonna grade it. If you have not tried the Peregrine, or maybe you tried an earlier version like me and have just sworn against ever wearing it again, the Peregrine 7 is a good example of maybe where the shoes direction is heading. So we'll see what kind of improvements and changes they make to the eight. But right now, the seven is holding up really well. And I've been running a lot of miles in this and I'll continue to do so as the weather begins to shift here in the Northwest. So solid try. And that my friends is it for today's review. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you like, favorite and subscribe to this channel. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers. So this is where I'm going to start saying subscribe, 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 but better than how I just said it. I honestly can't believe that we're almost there. And Obviously, this whole channel wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you sitting and watching it, which is obvious. So subscribe and click notifications on just so you know when I upload videos. There'll be a lot coming. This coming week, Ginger Bits comes back for a good period of time because uh, we're going on tour with Where Dreams Go To Die and you're not gonna wanna miss that. Social media links, click them all. Subscribe and do all that on those things up there. And of course, if you wanna help support the channel, keep things happening here week and month after month, go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a buck a month. It helps. And that, my friends, is it. Make sure you get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for, oof, lots of videos happening real, real soon. You're going to want to stick around. All right. See you next time. Bye. Beep.